It's been a long week, right? Are you ready to wind down? Why not? It's time for the Wine Time Fridays podcast with Shelly and Phil. Neither are sommeliers, but both have a deep passion for life, each other, and of course, delicious wine. And now, here to talk about this week over a glass of wine is Shelly and Phil. It's wine time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wine Time Fridays with Shelly and Phil. Not Shelly this time. Episode 09 of April 19th. Happy Friday. I don't even know how to do this. This is a Shelly's job. It's wine time. <laughs> Not like that. I did a left-handed. Um, today, we have another guest, which we are so thankful for. Um, in fact, uh, I met Dustin at hospice event, uh, and re- where I ran into Jeff, which we had on last week. By the way, a big thanks to Jeff and Mike LA uh, for those uh, Garzon talking about all those wines. Fantastic. But uh, I met Dustin and said, we'd love to have you on as a guest. And Dustin said, twist my arm. And so here he is uh, with all sorts of fun stuff. But Dustin is the Intermountain Regional Manager for Bogle Family Wine Collection. Dustin, thank you so much for coming here today. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me. I was looking forward to this. Great to talk about them. we got some new things in our portfolio and uh, you know, the timing is kind of fun to get the word out there, help spread the word. Some of these aren't even in stores yet. No, I know. Not. The first one that we're going to take. Perfect. This is great. This will just start to get in there. I love it. This will um, entice people. Uh, this is a uh, 20, oh my gosh, 2023. Am I right about that? Yeah, you are. 2023 juggernaut from Marlboro down in uh, New Zealand, Sauvignon Blanc. And you know, once again, I brought our one time Fridays, the one wine glasses from Andrew Robinson, who we love. Uh, here we are. Boom. And boom. Okay. We may not be able to line all those up. Uh, so it's always best to have wine in our glass <clears throat> while we have this conversation. So I'm, that's why I pour right away. I hate dry glasses. But uh, we'll do a Wine Time Fridays toast to health, wealth, abundance, gratitude. I am going to say romance, even though Shelly's not here. And peace on earth, which is her line. Thank you so much. Salud. Well, that doesn't smell like a New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Uh, this is, uh, you know, if you like New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, this fits the bill, but it's not over the top. It's not huge, you know, in your face, you know, with big, huge grassy notes, big grapefruit. It's also more timid, you know, soft, long, soft, softer, softer, yeah, yeah. more passion fruit, tropical guava, um, which I love. Oh personally. yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, this is the. I'm sure we've had one more. This I think is the third time we've had a distributor or a, a broker or. You know, not a not a winery, not a, a wine bar or a bottle mm-hmm. shop. We, uh, you know, so when we talk about prices, there can be prices in general terms. Okay, uh, when we have uh, Jesse on of uh, Balsamo talking about South African wines, he's like, you should be able to find these for this price yeah. area. Like Jeff last week, most of these wines were at twenty five bucks. So. Uh, where are we lying in the price point on this? Are we 15 to 20? Yeah, if, very easily. Yeah, we're, we're going to be probably closer to that, you know, 16.99 range. So we're right in the middle. Yeah, of that perfect. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's actually, well, with the exception of the Bolga wines today, yeah. okay. um, that's kind of where we fit the bill okay. on almost all of them. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so we are, um, so. Bogle Family One Collection is kind of a rebrand to encompass a whole bunch of different brands. Is that right? How many brands under the portfolio of Bogle Family Wine Collection? Well, what we're tasting here today is five, um, and that's what we sell to the broad market nationally now. Um, there are a couple of other that are maybe more private. Uh, private label brands for you know in various markets like we have a small brand called um, Acidity Trip that's down in California. Okay. 
um, and a couple of other you know, little small things. But yeah. For the most part, what we're tasting here today and the different brands uh, can be found across the U.S. You know, at you know major retailers, small bottle shops, restaurants. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. And this, by the way, is is delicious. Um, and you know, you brought it in fairly chilled. It's already kind of warmed up a little bit. Boy, those notes all of a sudden. Just yeah. Jump out. I don't like them so cold that because you just can't pull a whole lot out of them. This way, you know, they're they're chilled enough. But I, this is kind of where I like to have them. So sure, and get the notes out of them. And right. Just, you know, if if you, if they're too cold, sometimes it's just like just tastes like mineral and stones. And yeah, you know, if you're gonna drink a one bad, original, a bad white wine, put it in the freezer and have it get out just before it freezes because then you don't taste all the yeah. crap on it. Yeah. That's <laughs> how you drink the bad uh, spirits. Too. Yeah, it's all in the bad freezer. Bad. <laughs> Except for some vodkas, right? <laughs> some, yeah. okay. Um, what we like to say is that we use the 2020 rule, which is um, if you take a wine that you've had chilled in your 41 degree refrigerator or whatever, take that out 20 minutes before you go home, yeah. right? And uh, if you have a red wine that you've had in room temperature of 72, 71 degree, put it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes. Wines in our house, we're very fortunate. Our cellar is um, below ground with concrete, you know, um, yeah, walls. foundation walls. And uh, it stays between 58 and 60 yeah. all the time. So we don't really need to put that in the fridge because it's like perfect when yeah. we bring it up. But uh, and then it warms up while it's upstairs. Yeah. Unless we I had the same thing in my house and, and years ago I, I was in a friend's house and they were showing me their wine cellar. They used old um, carpet tubes, you know the tube that carpet. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, so I built my little cellar out of those and I cut them in half because a, a bottle like this can fit right in. So I cut them about a foot in length oh, and I stack them. And they're perfect. all in there right up against the foundation. And That's perfect. Same kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. You just picked up this bottle and I'm seeing a few bubbles in there. It's yeah. A little effervescent. It's a little bit yeah. effervescent. Yeah. And, and a couple of the, uh, well, you know, like Pinot Grigio. Uh, which we're not tasting today. You know, rosé tends to have a little bit of that as well. Um, just a smidge. Yeah, it's, but it's really refreshing. Yes, I yeah. love that. You know, you get that a lot in like, uh, like you know, Verdes and um, uh, some Albarinos. Mm -hmm. Get that little effervescent. Just one ounce of, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's just so refreshing. And we're entering into summer now, which, you know, is just a lot of fun. These are these are the wines that start, you know, making our yep. days. <laughs> well, sure. I have high hopes for this. This is what I typically drink. Is I love New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, and I so it's actually really unique for our portfolio. And the fact that you know we're a, we're a California wine company, mm -hmm. Bogle Family Wine Collection is now you know a little bit of a mouthful to say, but we have all these different brands, and yeah, so yeah. we're not just Bogle. We're not just Bogle Vineyards anymore. We have some other things. And so with that, we're expanding, and, you know, and really nothing's off the table. But for this, this is the first time we've ever imported a wine. So we're working with a small family-owned uh, vineyard yep. in Marlboro, New Zealand, and getting the fruit from them, kind of working with that conjunction with our winemaker mm -hmm. to create this. So it's, it's the first ever for us import wine under the Vogel Family Wine Collection. Have you been down there? Have they invited you down to the? Uh, uh, no, that's my bucket okay. list for sure. But you know, you've been South yeah. Africa. Or that place I have been, and I am like I fell in love with South Africa oh, when I was there. So, yeah, that that's a that'll be a fun episode. To oh, we've had we've had Jesse on twice, I think. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I think we've had him on twice. Uh, Jesse's fantastic, um, and and he's like a single man army with yeah. his wines. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, they're some fantastic wines. And of course, last week it was Garzona of the Uruguay. Yeah. Um, just set the, set the bar yeah. for those wines. I'm so thankful that um, you you come in here with these with these brands that many people will know. And it's not always the case in our podcast. Right, they're, they're right. brands that, that could be brand new for people, and uh, so people kn will know and recognize these names for sure. But you come in with this open, yeah. You know what? There's so many wines to try around the world. We hope you give ours a try, mm -hmm. but you know, widen your palate and just really have fun with this stuff. So I appreciate that uh, a lot. And you are just like sporting the brandy. 
Yeah, the Juggernaut hat, the Bobo Family Wine uh, Collection shirt. Uh, just got the wine and try stuff. Yeah. Um, so I should have brought you something where you could help support. <laughs> you got to cross cross brand, right? cross promote as cross -promote. often as there possible. Um, Jay Bookwalsh, I have one of their knitted caps. So, oh yeah, uh, right. and it's got me to the point where I can get a White Hat Fridays toque just like that. Yeah. So um, I am going. So feel free to use the dog bucket. Uh, I, I don't like to use it. I sometimes will when Shelly's here and she's like, this is the dump. And I'm like, I am the dump. Okay. So <laughs> makes sense. I'm going to open the Chardonnay, but I would love to know a little bit about your background or how you got into the wine business um, while I open up that Chardonnay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I'm going to sit the rest of this real quick. I like your style. Uh, since Sauvignon Blanc is kind of my go-to, but um, that's a good go-to too. Yeah, a little. I mean, my background. This is. Uh, I've been doing this now for about seventeen years. <clears throat> um, really, I started back in. I guess that would make it two thousand seven-ish, somewhere right in there. Um, and when I started, uh, yeah, nice I little pop there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love it. When I started, uh, this was not by design. And, you know, it, it seems like most people in the wine industry stumbled into it. Um, it was not what they went to school for, unless they're a winemaker. You know, people who are out on the streets and selling it, it seems like a lot of those people just kind of stumbled into it. And for me, that was really the case. I uh, I went to college. I live over in Spokane, so I'm, I'm sort of a, a local guy to the inland northwest area. Yeah. Um, my dad owned a wine brokerage um, that he had started back in 1991. I joined him in 07 uh, when I was just pretending not really getting hired on as a teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of what I went to school for. And um, he said, you know, would you be interested in helping me? And, and so I started helping him. As a, At the time, we were brokering wines from all over the world. So we had Washington wines. I'm very familiar with Book Walter. You mentioned mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Milbrandt Vineyards, we helped start, you know, back in the day. Those vines are um, fantastic. Gordon Brothers, we worked yep. with a lot. So some Washington wineries and then a lot from overseas, you know, Chateau Beaucastel, La Vie Ferme, um, you know, South African wines like Goats du Rome and, and such. And along with that, Bogle was always a staple in the portfolio uh, that we repped as well. And yeah. So for years, that's what I was doing. Uh, fast forward, uh, Bogle decided it was kind of the time to put their own people in place, and they had approached me. And uh, in 2023, I went to work directly for the winery after repping them as a broker for yeah. the previous 15 years. And here I am, a couple years later, and, and working directly for them as their Intermountain Regional Manager. So, what is your territory then? Uh, so it's small, but it's probably the best in the U.S. It's, you go into Montana. It's Idaho and Montana. Uh, and nothing in Washington. Yeah, no, not nothing in Washington. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I live I in Spokane. Like that. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, I live in Eastern Washington, so um, you know, we have a guy that's over based over in Seattle, and you know, I kind of help out, you know, from time to time. I get Washington. Yeah. You know, I'm here, so yeah. Yeah. why not? But um, yeah, directly responsible for Idaho, Montana. So you know, most beautiful states. Uh, it's <laughs> it's hard to travel through, right? Well, hashtag cheersing. Yeah, yes, uh, absolutely. Twenty twenty two. Excuse me, twenty twenty one. They're not Sonoco Chardonnay. Mm. <clears throat> you know, I was, I was never a big Chardonnay fan growing up. You know, I grew up around wine with my dad owning the brokerage, me working for him. Just sort of self-taught, learning all the different things. Oh man, Chardonnay is not my go-to. I really, I still love Chenin Blanc and Viognier, um, Sauvignon Blanc. I drink a lot of, but our Juggernaut Chardonnay is probably one of the favorites that I've tasted because it's not overly done with oak. It's a nice sort say, of middle of the road. I, I'm guessing there's a little bit of new French on this, and then a lot of neutral. Yeah, there it's it's a little bit of both. I mean, okay, it's about eighty six percent barrel fermented. Mm -hmm. It's all Sonoma Coast, so it's also a little bit brighter acid um, to the wine. So you get nuances of the oak there, and you know that twenty five percent that is, uh, excuse me, fifteen percent that is stainless steel as well. Oh wow, nice. <clears throat> so yeah, it's it's a I call it a, a middle of the road style Chardonnay without being. You know, hugely Californian, a big buttery oak bomb, but yeah. not completely stainless steel. Um, it's got just that nuance to the French oak. I certainly do not mind oak on the shark. I, you know, we, 
I cut my teeth in unwind with the butter bombs. Um, and now I swung over to the strictly stainless. And now I'm like, there's oak on it. As long as it's balanced, I am absolutely okay with that. Mm -hmm. The uh, sodium blocks comes in at 12.5% ABV. The Chardonnay comes in a point higher, 13.5, which is fine, but this is very clean. Uh, from the uh, step sister of Napa, Sonoma, uh, in their own right, producing fantastic wines. Uh, these two, uh, let's talk a little bit about the actual Juggernaut brand. How yeah. many uh, cases of wine are they producing in a year? We are we're over 250,000 cases now. So as a total company, Vogel Family Wine Collection, mm -hmm. Uh, we're over two and a half million cases annually. So you break that down, um, you know, all the different brands. Obviously, Vogel is the, the front runner, the, the large uh, bread and butter, you know, your company. Yeah, your brand. In a sense. Absolutely. Um, we'll talk about some of the other wines. You know, we have a reserve tier in Phantom. And then the Juggernaut brand was created about eight years ago. Um, originally, it was just a Cabernet. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had that for a couple of years. It has a lion on the front, and that's by far our most popular wine on the Juggernaut lineup. And then a few years back, we introduced a uh, Pinot Noir oh. to go along with it with uh, an Osprey on the front, kind of representing the finesse and beauty of what Pinot Noir is. Where is that fruit coming from? That's all Russian River. Russian River. Yeah. yeah, so these are a little bit more, uh, where Volvo is more California appellated. These are have more of a place, you know, a sense of home to where they come from. So the Cabernet and the Juggernaut is Hillside Vineyards, you know, Alexander Valley, Sierra Foothills. Um, and then Russian Pinot you know, Noir, and then you have Sonoma Chardonnay uh, with the, with, there's all apex predators or alpha predators on the label. So you can kind of, the labels really pop these wines. Right. Yeah, um, they really do. You know, yeah. Chardonnay is, is the great white of uh, all white wines, and Cabernet is kind of the king of red. So the they king really of the jungle with the yeah. lion, the, the king of the sea. I, I mean, it, it's it's true. It's true. There's nothing wrong with Chardonnay. Yeah. Nothing. There's so many other wines out there. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so many. Um, I'm not going to lie. In our house, it's always a go-to Chardonnay. Yeah, you know, probably half the time. No, yeah. Probably more than that. Probably three-quarters of the time. Shelly loves Chardonnay so much. Um, so we've got Alvarino in the house. We have Moussan in the house. We have mm -hmm. uh, Sauvignon Blanc from all around. And it's like, I just feel like Chardonnay again. Yeah. And, that, and that's okay. But we're trying to... Um, practice what we preach also yeah. and really push that a little bit yeah you know i i hear you i uh because uh of being a broker for so many years i had these opportunities to taste wines from all over the world all right. the time right and now you know working for bobo family wine collection you know we have a, a plethora of, of brands yes but you know they're all california and and uh, you know, for the most part, Cab Shard, you know, some Sauv Blanc, um, some of your typical varietals. And, and I joined a new wine club for the first time recently. Really? <laughs> yeah. You it's because I, uh, it was, uh, I joined Tablos Creek at Paso. You know uh, what? Because I love those Rhone style varietals. I've been there, I, you know, I have kind of a connection there. And, and so I love those wines. Not, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I, I love our wines sure. as well. But, but I mean, we do should actually taste other wines. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, we had Tablos Creek on. Oh, All right. right on. Yeah, and and what was really fun is it comes around full circle. First of all, we love to not. Mm -hmm. They make a great yeah. time, okay? Number two, uh, they supply the vines for Syrah for Liberty Lake Wine Cellars. Oh, really? Because they have a program. Yeah. Like that. Nursery and the yep. port, yeah. And so we had uh, Mark and Sarah on from Liberty Lake Wine Cellars, and they talked about that. We brought that back in on the Tablas Creek episode. Wow. It was just someone, and we still have a bottle of that tonight downstairs. Yeah. So, oh, right on. Yeah, it's just I just so got much. my first wine club shit. I haven't picked it up yet, but I'm excited to bust into yeah. them and, and yeah. you know, kind of see what I've got there. You know, we are. So let me ask you: Does the Bogle Family Wine Collection have a wine club? Yes. Yeah, they do have a wine club. It's called the the Bandwagon, uh, I believe. Um, yeah, you can sign up, and we do some other. 
you know, like like most wine clubs, there's Diverse. some select wines, yeah. yeah, that are available that are it's not library. Yep. Yeah. yeah, not always available to you know the general public. Yep. Um, so yeah, absolutely. There's, um, I mean, you can sign up. You know, Bowl Family Wine Collection, BF Bowl Family Wine Collection, BFWC dot com is kind of the link to the hub. I would say to all the brands. So Bowl, Bowl which is good. And just else. look below. We have a link in the show notes. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 um, whether you're listening on audio or on YouTube, they're all easy in the comments. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, um, what was I going to say? Uh, you know what? It sounds like a good time. It seems like a good time for a break. And then I'm going to change the camera adjustment. And uh, these bottles seem a little heavy. I just wish there was a something out there that didn't play into the weight of these bottles. Maybe there is. We'll see when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to One Time Fridays on this uh, 19th of April, episode 209. Um, I, I guess I didn't really say why Shelly's not here. She is not feeling well at all. Uh, the first time in One Time Fridays history where there's just one of us and it's not my fault. I was in the ICU for 16 days. I did oh, three. No. I did three episodes to keep us going. Without wine, without Shelly, uh, oxygen up my nose. Yeah, the whole kit and caboodle. But we never, we didn't miss a beat. That's and good. Uh, it is a, in a sense, but that episode uh, 69, I think, is the first one, um, and it, it was like number two uh, of listens. And I'm like, well, that's got to change. Yeah. So I started pumping, promoting all those other right. ones. Push that one down. Right. So, <laughs> you don't want to see that. I don't, no, yeah, yeah, I don't want to see that one there. <laughs> bad, bad days. We are here with Dustin Lewis with the Bogle Family Wine Collection. And actually, the more you say it, that's right, the more you say it, the easier uh, it comes. Um, before we went to break, I, I was kind of a little pet peeve of these heavy bottles. You see people, uh, Karen McNeil, boy, she just bashed these heavy bottles, uh, I don't know, about a month ago. And people were like, yeah, there are. but it didn't perceive value. But at, at the end of the day, you want good juice in a good vehicle. And uh, why don't you talk a little bit about our next wine, which is the 20. 22 Elemental Rosé. That is correct. That looks like that. Yes. Yeah. So this is there. There's a there's a significant movement in the wine industry to reduce the bottle weight. Uh, Here you sometimes, go. Sometimes there, it's uh, because there's no bottom, you know, foil like there is in a lot of these. A lot of people will try and twist the whole thing, but you just gotta do the uh, the top little capsule there. And there's the education still <laughs> on how to open a brand new aluminum <laughs> wine bottle. But the wine isn't in contact with aluminum. No, not at all. Not yeah. at all. I mean, there's been so many things oh, that's pretty. Um, that have been in aluminum vessels, you know, for years between beer, pop, you know, sure. uh, yeah. and, and goods, um, you know. Wine in can, etc. Um, so, but but what I was saying was there. There's been this movement to really reduce the weight of uh, of wine bottles out there. And one of the big contributors to the wine's carbon footprint is glass. Yeah. And it, it's uh, it's now it's about thirty percent. So there's a lot of wineries that are moving, you know, towards a sustainable approach. A lot of that is within the vineyards. We are taking it one step a little bit further in our new brand called Elemental and, and putting it into the bottle. So not only are we practicing those sustainability classes within the vineyards, uh, but now into the bottle. So with this, this on average, I mean, if you look at it right next to the Chardonnay without the without yeah. the bottle topper on, yep. it appears visually smaller. smaller. Yes. And that is um, that is just because of the, the thickness of the glass. The, well, the thickness of the aluminum, yeah, the thickness of the well, glass, uh, yeah, which, whichever sure. way you want to talk about it, it kind of goes both ways, right? Yeah, it's, yep. sure, that, um, but, I mean, absolutely, I, actually, I'm glad you said something, because there was part of me that's like, oh, this is obviously only 500 mils, but it's 750, mm -hmm. infinitely recyclable, shatterproof, outdoor friendly, 80% lighter than glass. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and right up front there, I don't know if you can see it, it actually does say 750 milliliter in the corner. Uh, so we're trying to make sure that oh. that the consumer knows this and sees this. Uh, along with that, we've got you know things that will be coming out with uh, just making their way into market right now. Uh, but we want the consumer to pick that bottle up, feel it, see what it is, and really. So I brought this puck today. Oh, nice. I'll, I'll hold it a little bit closer. You can kind of see what it is. It's a it's a three inch aluminum puck. And this is what this bottle starts as. So it starts as this tiny little puck. It gets uh, punched down multiple times into a cylinder shape, right? Then kind of gets formed into what looks like a wine bottle. It gets painted, it gets lined um, inside so the wine does not come into contact with any of the aluminum. And then, you know, then we fill it with juice in there. So when you line, so is that, um, that puck is just inside that's not aluminum. Puck. This is an aluminum oh, this thing turns into this bottle. It really does. It's straight from here. This is where it starts. It gets wow, punched down sure. times. And we had to search out for an aluminum company. Yeah. Um, there's only one in the US that, that I've been told that can do this. Yeah. Uh, there's some other aluminum winery. There's other wineries that are putting uh, wine into aluminum. But we are the first to do it in a wine bottle shape that looks like an actual wine bottle. It's a full 750 milliliter. And as you mentioned earlier, it's infinitely recyclable, 80% lighter. On average, it's about a pound lighter. The warehouse people and people that are throwing full cases, they love this. Not only do they love that, but your shipping costs go way down. I, I, I'm guessing that in the wine club, you uh, would, if you are okay, it's free shipping. Maybe, maybe not, but whatever, your cost goes down. Right, absolutely. Significantly. Absolutely. Because instead of paying the 20, 30, 40 bucks to send it out, I mean, it's so much lighter. I just, the case of wine is somewhere in the vicinity of 35 to 40 pounds. Yeah. I think. Am I right? Yeah, four, 45 is kind of what okay. we put on average. Ours are about 25 and a half. On, on these? Yes. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. So the, uh, um, I, I, I'm drawing a blank on how much one one bottle is, uh, but the the case itself is about 25 pounds, and on average, yeah, it, it's just a significant savings, almost a full pound per per bottle. Looking at it. Well, because Shelly and I are in business to help businesses with our social media um, marketing company and agency. Uh, if you are out there looking for a niche, maybe you should look into uh, competing with this company that's creating these wine bottles because right now if they're the only one doing it they're like yeah it's gonna cost you this much yeah and now when you get competition yeah. now things start changing a little bit yeah is there absolutely. Some, gonna be some upfront upfront uh uh investment yeah yeah so you might want to have a little cash at the beginning but um this is freaking awesome uh so let's review this sodium blanc from new zealand uh Marvel, yes mm -hmm. When does that hit the shelves? When does that start to become available? So we just launched this about a month ago, okay. uh, the beginning of uh, March, and it'll start working its way into um, store shelves, well, by the end of this month into next month. Mm -hmm. So I know like locally here, and Super One kind of resets a lot of their um, sets in, into May, you know, as we move forward a little bit more, but. Um, Albertson Safeway companies were the first to pick up the elemental wines nice. on a national basis. I know they're in Fred Meyer. I'm pretty sure they're in Fred Meyer. Uh, actually, Fred Meyer is one of the few places nationally that didn't pick us up. I just talked to Sherilyn, Sherilyn. Sherilyn. a few days ago. Sherilyn, she, she's, she's a listener. A, yeah, she, uh, um, I, I just talked to her. I know she has some interest in these. I talked to her about doing a tasting. Uh, but nationally, Kroger didn't didn't pick us up. Nationally, Albertson and Safeway companies were the largest that, yeah. that moved regionally here. Obviously, you know, Yolks, uh, mm -hmm. I believe, will be moving forward with both the Juggernaut Sauv Blanc yeah. and the Elemental. Um, the Juggernaut Chardonnay, you can find, you, can find you know, that, right yeah. now. Um, Super One has always been a big advocate of ours. Uh, Fred Meyer, the Coraline, has uh, pretty much all these wines with the exception of the new ones. Um, I know she liked the Juggernaut Sauv Blanc as well. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. it's great places to, to search for them. It's the tough. Wines. Sherilyn's a wine bar for Fred Meyer and uh, over for our cook, but they don't let her taste. 
the yeah. wines. It's so stupid. It's just dumb. It just pisses me off. I can say it because Shelly's not here. Yeah. It pisses me right off. Um, I won't hold you back. <laughs> what is this a uh, rosé of? Uh, maybe I should guess. This is from California. Is this a, a Pinot rosé? You are there. Yes. Ah. yes. Yeah, rosé of Pinot Noir. Um, this, this first vintage, uh, we do have a little bit of Zinfandel in there as well. Um, and then not the whites in, just the all not whites in, not, no, whites in. No, not sweet. Um, this is considered to be kind of an off dry style. Uh, but so as Bogle, Bogle family wine collection, we farm about uh, two thousand, just over two thousand acres of our own in Clarksburg, okay. California, which is just kind of South Sacramento area um, for the most part. But we work with eighty different growers across the state of California, mm -hmm. across twelve different appellations. So we're able to, that's how we produce Bogle wines and how we're able to get Russian River Pinot Noir for the Juggernaut, Sonoma Coast Chardonnay, and then, you know, some great Pinot Noir to, to use as a little, um, you know, make a little rosé out of Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, that's one of the reasons why I uh, titled this Red, White, and Bogle, a true Delta Force with Delta Yes, Delta. I like that. Man. Yeah, because you are down in the uh, Delta, Delta region. In Delta yeah. region, yeah. So, um I have my moments, especially when AI is yeah. involved. So, <laughs> well, Delta Force was also, I believe, one of my favorite Chuck Norris movies Ooh. from back in the day, too. Ooh, Chuck, he's, by the way, still alive, and I can say alive and kicking. Kick, yeah. Because he really does kick. But he's like, I mean, gosh. He's 80 if, plus. If yeah. we could all be in the shape he yeah. is, I would like to be in his shape even at 16. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be, like, oh, my gosh. Oh, Right, I mean, but you know, it takes it takes work, dedication, commitment. Yeah. So the, 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 the last thing I will say on you know these elemental wines. So as you pointed out earlier, there, there's a little box around the AL, and if anyone knows anything, you know, chemistry. I was not good at this type of stuff, but the periodical, uh, the periodic table of elements uh, for aluminum is AL. Yeah. And so with this wine. It is an element, um, so we call this wine elemental. I've had people say, oh, the new AL wines, the new element wines, but it's all one elemental. Uh, we've really got, we're going about this a different way. It's your non-traditional launch to a new wine brand. Yeah. A lot of people go after, you know, wine enthusiasts and spectator and all these places. We right now have ads on billboards. We have window shopping, uh, Fifth Avenue in New York. Really? Those windows. So we're going after more of the, the consumer, you think? Yeah, the, the, the fashion world. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we're. Dude, this is a beautiful, beautiful absolutely. Uh, presentation. And, and it helps the earth. If we can. Look, I don't know if this will ever replace some of the higher end red wines because it really is about how that feels i don't know for sure maybe we can change that we're we're not trying to in fact that's a point it's yeah. not something we're not trying to do that we we've done a lot of research it's almost four years in the making now yeah. um, you know working with different companies but what we found is 90 uh, 90 percent of wines are consumed within the first year of purchase 99% are, or excuse me, 90% is consumed within the first two weeks. Yeah, and then 99% is within yeah. the first year. Those are kind of the consumers we're going after. You know, people have asked us, what about the longevity of these wines? How will they hold up? We've done our own, you know, little research yes, with little uh, you know, testing groups with winemakers, sales, yeah. etc. cetera. Uh, we've done about a year and a half, almost two years now, wine tasting. And you know, there's really no perceivable difference of wine in aluminum versus wine in glass. And we really feel that they'll hold up. If they're still on the shelf after three years, then you know we've got other problems going on. Well, I mean, who knows if they're still holding up after three years, that'd be fantastic. Absolutely. Way, it's still not wine in aluminum. It's an, an aluminum vehicle, but it's got that, right. that line right there. Yeah. EPA free. You know. Yeah, I just figured out it. Okay, I'm tired of this uh, <laughs> small wine glass. Dustin, we're gonna get to the bigger one. And we're going to start with a little phantom, uh, one of our favorites around Halloween, <laughs> for <laughs> obvious reasons. Yes, absolutely. Um, this is going to be the uh, proprietary red blend. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the phantom? Yeah. So if uh, one of the things that maybe some of your uh, listeners, viewers will notice is we actually have a new label on the phantom. So this has changed you know, a few times over the years. 
Um, Phantom used to be considered kind of this coal like wine where you'd get small amounts of it and, and people would just go nuts for it. Now we, we do produce a little bit more. This is the red, that's kind of where we started. We now have a Chardonnay, it's kind of the sidekick there. Um, but with this, this is really a, a Petit Syrah Zinfandel blend. Um, it's, it's about 60 40 on those two. But the tie in to Vogel, a couple different things here. Vogel, um, sort of the, the heritage, you know. In the old Scottish Gaelic language, directly translates to phantom uh, or boogie. You know, interesting. And so that's kind of where that comes from. Bogle is family owned and operated still. Um, you know, three siblings, but the phantom is sort of a play into that. Along with that, as we have people that have worked for the winery for over thirty years and have had sightings of these phantoms uh, or ghosts, like mm -hmm. um, especially in Joshua Tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Lindsay Bryant. So um, yeah, that's kind of the background on Phantom, where it came from, what it has evolved to, um, and and kind of where we're at now with, with what Phantom. Yeah, I have to choose you. This is uh, this has got a really terrific note. Um, I was not paying attention when you said the uh, one of the bridles that are in this. I think I heard uh, Zinfandel. Zinfandel and Petit Syrah, yeah. We're about a 60-40 blend. Uh, I believe Petit Syrah is the dominant okay, variety. Gotcha. Um, changed a little bit over the years, but um, yeah, we're kind of locked in that last few vintages and been uh, near that 50-50 mark. This is fantastic. Um, this has got a taste of a 20 to 25 dollar, maybe even 30 dollar red wine. Um, and this is under 20. Yeah, you are right. Jeez. Yeah, the Phantom Red Blend. Um, I believe we're we're a top five or six red blend in that fifteen to twenty dollar category, which is a pretty good category. Right now. Yeah, yeah. There are those sweet spots in the in the terms of price points, right? Yeah. Um, there are some uh, dead zones. Uh, that would be a great thing for you to explain some of those dead zones where you want to stay away from. And some of the sweet spots I would think are going to be between the twelve and eighteen dollar range, give or take. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay. Um, I mean, the biggest, the biggest, the most volume of wine sold right now is kind of that eight to twelve dollar uh, mark. Um, we see Cabernet, Chardonnay are the big heavy hitters, mm -hmm. um, but Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Grigio are the two hottest varietals right now, and the hottest, uh, the largest growth um, price point right now is fifteen to twenty. So yeah, that's kind of you know one of the you know I say that Sauvignon Blanc is the largest growth varietal. Fifteen to twenty is the hottest segment right now, and that's seventeen bucks. Right now. <laughs> so that that one kind of ties in. Phantom obviously hits the bill with with that right in between that fifteen to twenty dollar mark as well. This seems like a really good one to uh, talk about our uh, social web wine word of the week, which is jammy. <laughs> this to me is jammy. Yeah. Well, that's you know you're going to get that from the teeth are off. We are we are one of the leading producers. Well, we are far and away the number one producer of teeth syrah in our bogle petite syrah. Um, but we produce petite syrah at the property, um, and and that can have some of those jammy qualities. It kind of finishes up. You know, the Zinfandel adds a little bit of that, those peppery notes, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, there as well. But yeah, concentrated fruit, a little bit of jamminess. Um, you'll you really kind of get that from both of the varieties that are yep. in here. Uh, petite syrah, just so you know, has nothing to do with syrah. Right, it is a smaller grape. That's the petite, I guess, spelled differently, and really thick skin. So you're going to find some tannins on yeah, this, right? Smaller berries, yep. thicker skin, yep. more concentration in the fruits. Yeah. There you go. And in French, yes. do you know what the varietal is? Oh, uh, no. Derif. Really? Yeah, D-U-R-I-F. So I don't know if I'm botching the name, but Derif, Derif. This is, see, we're yes. missing Shelly because she's you know, the one we count on for French pronunciations. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't have a French background. Oh my gosh! Yeah, uh, Derif is the same grape as Petit Syrah. It's the same grape. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like uh, you know, going back to South Africa, Chenin Blanc and Steen. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Petit Verdot is one of the um, Bordeaux varietals. 
Petit Syrah is not. Correct. Um, and, and generally on its own can be a little tough. We're going to have a 100% Petit Syrah later. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, we... I actually can't say that it's 100% down with you the know, lower These sign. days, it's rare that a wine is 100% cat, 100% this and that, unless it's white. Red wines will typically have maybe a little bit of Merlot, maybe but a little cat something, something, something blended. Yes, yeah, so if something on the label says 100%, on the back says 100%, then you know it's true great varietal. True. Yeah. And, and those are great because then the varietal is, is speaking. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you got left bank, right bank Bordeaux, heavy cab, heavy Merlot, with some other um, in there for nuances and depth. Um, you're gonna, it's always gonna be a, a little, it's just different when you start blending yeah. the grapes to it, right? Yep. So um, that'll be, that'll be, I'm looking forward to the Petit Syrah. We actually see that everywhere, the bold Petit Syrah. This is fantastic. Uh, it does have those concentrated fruit flavors that resemble preserved fruits, plum, blackberry. Oh man, strawberry jam. Yeah, this is aged for about two years in American oak. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the oak profile on these. Sauvignon Blanc, yep. no oak. Rosé, yep. no oak. Uh, the Sonoma Coast, Jug okay. Rock Chardonnay, yeah. yeah, French oak. So this one is American oak for about two years. So oh, wow. a lot of different oak profile, a little bit more maybe nuttiness. Um, oh, good call. Yeah, higher, absolutely. Uh, you know, a little bit toasty vanilla kind of qualities in there, along with, you know, obviously those dark sort of pinky, dark berry fruits as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to take one last break, and when we come back, we're going to knock out three wines and uh, – yeah, I can't wait. These are freaking awesome. <laughs> okay, so I can do the rest in an accent if you want. Ooh, good. Oh, here we go. Welcome back to Wine Time Fridays, episode 209, with Dustin Lewis, who has just informed me he is not gonna have a Russian accent to go with. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one accent I don't do. Okay, is that uh, uh, you sure. Yeah. Uh, man, this one's not slipping off. So uh, we are uh, on wine number five of seven. And this this is our favorite opener. Yeah. It's I love little, this. That little, little, little book, book, but this is our uh, one time Friday's opener um, that we use for all episodes. But yeah, you can take these on plane. Oh, have, because no knife. No knife, yeah. So we sell these, by the way, we do, we don't sell them, but we have a link to uh, Amazon. Uh, and uh, probably get three cents on any sale because of the affiliate. Sure. But, uh, or four cents, whatever the going rate is. But we have a whole things we use page on our website. And we don't have everything on there. There are only things that we really use. We've got Andrea's glasses. We've got this opener. Um, there's, uh, you can never remember, is it Duval? Something, is that what it's called? For it's opening really old wines with old corks. It's uh, got the Asso on it as well as the screw. Um, yeah, I actually don't know what the name of those are. Yeah, I, I have to look on our website. But it's not something I use often. No, we've yet to use ours, um, but actually, uh, during the break, we talked a little bit about some of our open that all night uh, events, and it seems like Long Shadows has corks that don't last up very long. At least that's been our experience, and they break. And then the mans look at me like, "Do you not know what you're doing?" And so I'm like, <laughs> "Shut up." So well, speaking of cork, I don't know. Let's see if this one has it on there. Does that one have it? Well, these corks, I don't remember, uh, I don't know if they're DM corks, so it says CW on here, but these corks, uh, out of, there's like a polymer, I, I don't, I'm not going to get in too corky or dorky about at the corks, but um, it's, it's, I have not had, you know, knock on wood, I don't remember the last time I had a cork bottle of wine with, with these style of corks mm -hmm. that, that we've been using, um, and so they're, they're really good. They're yeah. not. They're not a full synthetic, but they're not a hundred percent real. You know, the right, right, right. in there, but no air. 
will get through and into the wine, at least from what I've inspired. By the way, so, like you said before, um, 90% of the wines are open within a um, two week period and 99 yeah. within a, a year. Yeah. So, I mean, the days of the course, we like it because of the romance behind it. Okay. You pop the cork. Absolutely. I didn't smell that one, but I just didn't know. Um, this is a 2021 Bogle. You guys know that. This is Merlot. And uh, I'm guessing not 100% Merlot. Um, that one, you could be correct. Yeah, I believe we blend in. It, it's one of those like secret things. I mean, well, I don't put it on there. We say it's Merlot. We say it's Cab. It's Petite Straw. Right. But all it, ha it has to have is at least 75% Merlot, yeah. and then you're good to go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in, in different, by the way, different, uh, I think different states mm -hmm. have different rules about how much you can blend in. But yeah, California just needs to be 75%. Years ago, before red blends were red, were a thing. Right. Uh, this was when I first started. So now, you know, 15, 16 years ago, <laughs> it, it was, uh, I was selling a, a red blend that was 80% Cabernet, 10% Merlot. And it was a tough sell to sell a red blend. Nice. I was like, just put it on as a Cabernet. Like it's, it's there's a lot of Cabernets out there that are less than those. And there's there's one. I thought Washington was different than California, but I think that they've, they've now come together at seventy five percent. I think no, Oregon might be maybe, different because maybe the, it's eighty or seventy yeah. or something like that. Um, Oregon's kind of a disobedient stepchild, anyway. But. Uh, by the way, Oregon Wine Month is coming up in May. Just so you all know, we have a very fun lineup. <laughs> a very fun lineup. Oh, my gosh. So fun. This is very smooth. That's what we want. You know, Merlot is not, not as popular as Cabernet. Not as popular as Chardonnay. You mean Even I don't Pinot want Noir, another it, fucking Merlot? It's been around for forever, and but... We uh, we have a couple of wines actually that we're tasting today too that we can probably say we're the number one selling in the U.S. Oh, man, that is this so is cool. one of them. Both that is so low. that's so cool. You know, so did you see uh, some of the um, trends going down after sideways with this Merlot? Well, yeah, I know. I know industry industry wide, right? it, it was a shot, and of course, you know, Pinot Noir. Through yeah, the roof. Through the roof. Um, because that one line. <laughs> not having any more fucking murder. Yeah. Life. I mean, who knew that uh, he could have that much pull? <laughs> I don't think anybody did. No. No. <laughs> but yeah, Mer Merlot is one of those, along with Zinfandel, you know, Petit Syrah. They're out there. They're great. And, and they used to be, well, Merlot and Zin especially, used to, you could find those just about every grocery store, you know, there was a section of Merlot or Zinfandel. And now it seems like more and more people are cutting back on, on those sections. Actually, uh, Zin. Yeah, Zin is it's almost getting harder to, harder to find, you know? You know, um, some of these uh, wines, I'm the bridles, because we try to concentrate on, you know, Marcelon Day or uh, Merlot Day and Chardonnay Day, things like that. Those are the, but like Zinfandel, it's not easy to find. Yeah. It's just not. Uh, so you have a very small selection of Zins. And then you're like, well, I'm not going to collect the same Zins from downstairs. Right. So it, it's too bad because it, the Zinfandel grape is fantastic. Yes. It's just great for barbecues and meatloafs and burgers and just a variety. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, for sure. <clears throat> now I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't stop naming all those foods. Uh, no, we we have so talking about Bogle, you know, the Bogle family wine collection, Bogle vineyards. You know, Merlot is kind of a thing for us for years. Um, we are the number one selling Merlot. You know, that's fantastic. This opposed to what the rest of these are, you know, in that fifteen to twenty dollar category, are Bogle. In fact, the the next three wines are kind of that sub ten or, or right around that ten dollar. So uh, this is eight to twelve dollars. This is this, this this is eight to twelve dollars. Yeah, and it's tasting double that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, so we talk about QPI, a QPR all the time. Um, the quality to price ratio mm -hmm. on this is really off the charts. 
off the charts good. And uh, I mean, what a great everyday wine that's not going to break the bank. Yeah. You know? You know, it's it's fun. Yeah. I, I sell, we sell a lot of the main line, traditional line Vogel is what mm -hmm. we call it. Um, I don't taste them as often because we're just kind of plugging and going and talking to, you know, distributors and retailers about it, but we're not tasting them with people as often as we are, you know, the new stuff we're, you know, we're tasting, we're yeah, familiar, we're, we're bringing this on. Yeah. yeah. But going back, Oh, it's, it's fun to revisit the Merlot and see how it is. And you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's got like that hint of bell pepper. It's got a little bit of the black pepper, but it's so smooth. It, it is, uh, you forget, you know, how good, is this the current, the current vintage that's on the shelves, the 21? 20, yes, I Let's believe see. so. We're, we're probably real close to transitioning. Yeah, but I mean, still, we're talking three years and uh, 8 to 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, people don't get how much, what the cost is that goes into actually uh, barreling wine for a significant amount of time, right? Yeah. Uh, do you know how long this is in barrels? I believe we're probably 10... Eight, 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 eight to 12 months. I'm um, oh. trying to remember any given vintage. We have actually, it's a good little segue because we have a, um, you'd think of the winery of our size. We, we produce over two and a half million cases. You know, wineries can take shortcuts a lot of different ways. And many do. Yes. We, we pride ourselves on not taking any shortcuts. We have a barrel room that houses over 95,000 barrels. So oh. we, you know, it, it's a football field with of barrels. You know, we just do a little right now with the, uh, with the uh, French barrels going about 1,500 to 2,000 yeah. bucks a barrel. And you have how many? Yeah, over 95,000. That's significant. Significant, cost. yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we built, um, so our winery is about 12, 13 years old now. Mm -hmm. the, the facility that we are producing wine in, before that, we, st we started back in 1968, Right. started putting wine in a bottle, you know, about 10 years later, and and we were in a small facility right along the Delta River there, and we were using kind of a mobile bottling line up until about 12 years ago. Really? 12 years ago is kind of when we... we <laughs> most mobile bottling line with that. How many yeah. Bottles? Oh, my yeah. God. But, I mean, if you think about it, we're working with 80 different growers across the sure. state of California, 12 different Appalachians, so we were bottling... Whenever we could bring grapes yeah, in, right. right now with this facility, it's it's amazing. Number one, we have solar panels, you know, on the top that you know very sustainable, sustainable, nice. and we give our growers um, uh, a bonus and incentive to farm sustainably. So since we implemented this program, we paid out over six million dollars to you guys, to growers. But we every lot that comes in from different vineyards we put into tank and, and vinify that separately so that we can see the quality of those grapes that are coming in from that, right. that farmer. So what that allows us to do is really give us the ability to pick and choose where do we want those grapes? You know, do we want right. it? And do we, do we want those grapes? You well, know, so you, really had, do a lot of you had mentioned the, um, the Pinot Noir that goes into Rosé. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with saying we've got a whole lot of Pinot Noir. We're going to take some of this fruit and we're going to make some rosé out of it, right? Uh, so that's a it's a luxury to have that. How many winemakers do you have under the Bogle family wine collection? Well, our head winemaker is Eric Offit. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Dana Stemmler, who is, uh, if he is the, the vice president or president of winemaking, she would fall right under him. Yeah. And then of course there's a crew of different seller people. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but we, you know, the, there's, uh, isn't this, when, oh, we're out of March. Is March women wine month or is that, or, or is that uh, April? Uh, wow, that's a great <laughs> question. <laughs> I uh, want to say it was March. I should know this, damn it, Justin. Uh, <laughs> but we, because we have a whole series of women in Right, wine. right, right. Well, we often use, um, you know, one of our owners, so there's three family siblings, Warren, Ryan, and Joey Bogle. I Bogle. did see that, yeah. Um, so we, we oftentimes, you know, we'll create things around, you know, women in wine. And yep. With Dana Stemler being, uh, you know, one of our wine head makers. Sure. Um, and Jody will, will, will create things around them and have them go in and do different events in areas. So 
Um, but all in all, I mean, obviously it's a it's a team with the size that we are. There's sure there's a team. Oh, of course. Um, I've ran into people because we're pretty proud of having a certain series that we have, and one of them, women in wine, because for the most part, for the majority of the winemaking years, it's it's been a, a men's you know industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we want to we want to spread some love and lift up the women winemakers. They've had it tough to get in right. the industry, and people will say, "I, you know, it's all about what's in the wine. I don't want to make it about the winemaker, and that's great." But we want to be able to feature and, and really shed a light on these right. women winemakers. That you know, we have a Liz Keezer at Rocky Pond. Mm -hmm. We have Jody Elson down at Elson. I mean, there's a lot of very, very uh, strong women winemakers out there. They should be. I, I'm not saying we, we need to. To choose them over men, just said, let's just give them a buzz. Yeah, yeah. recognition. Um, I might throw a audible just because we just had the Bogle um, Merlot. Yeah, can we open the sure? Just draw? like with the Bogle thing. Yeah, right? let's do that. Then we'll, and then we'll end up with that cap. Absolutely beautiful. So this is a 2021 uh, Bogle Petit Syrah. This is one of those wines that we find all the time on the shelf. <laughs> so talk a little bit about this petite Syrah, if you will. Yeah, in fact, it's funny you say that. I just got my, my hair cut last week from an old buddy of mine who, who used to sell wine uh, for a distributor uh, that I used to work with in Spokane. And he just bought a bottle of it. And he was like, it was the only petite Syrah I could find on yeah. the shelf. Yeah. And that's, uh, I mean, that's a good and a bad thing. It's, yeah. It's, it's a bad know. thing because you, you want to have more selection. Yeah, you, know, you don't want petite Syrah to just be gone. If there's yeah. going to be one petite Syrah, you'd like to have your if, Yeah, that's the good thing. So if, if you want, if there's going to be one, you know, it's going to be ours. And we are similar to the Merlot. Uh, Bogle Petite Syrah is far and away the number one sign of Petite Syrah in the U.S. Safe to save the world. Um, we've Good for you. Guys. We outsell, you know, the next three or four different suppliers of Petit Syrah combined. So this is kind of what we what we originated with, and uh, I'm going to hold my story for our next one. Okay. Okay. To tell you sort of where Petit Syrah came with and originated Beautiful. because it ties into to the next wine that we're tasting. But um, yeah, let's give this a such great color here. So. Justin asked before we started, before we hit record, should we open any of these wines? If there was any of these wines that should have been open first, is probably this one. This has got some tannins that are right there. <laughs> that does. It's got right there. But my guess is two minutes in the glass and a lot of heavy swirl. We're going to dissipate those and soften those tannins up a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, but, um, so talk about the actual great petite Syrah a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. You know? Yeah, with that it's, zone, it's yeah. not Syrah. Um, you know, it's a smaller berry. It's its own varietal altogether, a little more concentrated fruit. It can have a little bit of that peppery or spiciness into it. Yeah, for But sure. it has more of like a violet, you know, color to it. Almost, yeah. a, you know, a purple. It really does, hue. yeah. Um, and it is, it is concentrated. You know, it can be considered jammy. For me, the, the number one descriptor that I tend to use for it is juicy. I just feel like it, you know, there's tannins there, but the juiciness kind of is what almost what lingers with me. And it makes me, um, you know, I equate it to chewing a piece of gum to help my mouth feel like water, you know. Uh, that's almost what this does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, you know? Yeah, that would be like a uh, Gary Vaynerchuk reference there. <laughs> there you go. Did you see he just started his, uh, oh yeah, wine text, yeah, yeah, wine text uh, TV. Oh, that's so great. Nice. Yeah, I'm great. I used to talk about that guy before, and no one knew who he was. And many was people like, still well, don't. Yeah. We were watching him in 08. Yeah. We were uh, in 08, and, and he rubbed me wrong right off the bat, and then it grew real fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, he doesn't make any apologies for anything. We were no. in Gary V. Wine Club, which I would highly recommend. Yeah. We were going to get Brandon Warnke on. As a guest, if he'll ever return my uh, calls, <laughs> he said he wanted to do it. But uh, yeah, the Gary V Wine Club is now up to ninety bucks instead of the 
where I got in right at the beginning yeah. at 55. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, very nice. But, uh, you're, you know, we're getting anywhere from 150 to $200 worth of wine. And those are retail prices. We all know yeah. suggested retail is far different than what's actually sure. on the shelf. Sure. But, uh, yeah, so yeah, Gary, we almost had Gary speak at our social media conference with this class. Yeah, he's a, he's a guy that keeps things. What, what I liked when I originally started watching him, you know, he had his Jets spittoon there. <laughs> he about still does. It. I know. He, he still he does. Back and he would just keep things simple. You know, he's like, let's give it a snippy snip. And I don't think he's using that term We're anymore. Gonna, oh, yes, he is. Is he? Oh, oh yes, yes, he is. There were We're some gonna, things. We're going to give it a word. I've only watched, the, I think, the first two episodes, and he was like, Change some things up, but um, oh, a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's, this, he just kept it simple and yeah. down to earth, relatable, and that's you know honestly with our with our wines and tying it, yes, that's what we want. You know, wine is not meant to wine can be complicated, doesn't, but don't overcomplicate. No. Like just just get what you want. I tell people, I'll tell you this story. This was a fun story for my dad's fiftieth birthday. Uh, one time we'd gone out and I was repping uh, Justin Vineyards was okay. one of the wineries. Yeah, we were down. We had Justin at on the time. Okay, yeah, right. Also, yeah. And we had um, a, a couple bottles of isosceles that oh, we were passing so around good. the table and we had my grandma and cousin. We almost did like a sort of vertical. A vertical? Sort of yeah. I think I still have some in oh, my cellar that yes. I, I probably need to drink because I, I don't know. What, I don't know. What's the vintage? Uh, I think 05, a couple of oh, five, and those are built really well. So yeah, no problem. as long as yeah. it's short. Well, Justification, yeah. Savant, but um, yes. But we were saying, we we were tasting these. Uh, um, we had just a nice bottle. We cracked open. We're passing around. Everyone was taking a little bit, and, and it came to my grandma, and I poured her a little bit, and then she grabbed a couple uh, ice, cubes? Of ice cubes oh. out of her you know water glass and dropped them in. And I remember my cousin was so appalled. It was just like. What is she doing, Dustin? You gotta tell her she can't do that. And I said, Grandma can drink wine however she wants, and that's been my motto from uh, you know it ever, should ever since I started this. So uh, you know, people enjoy different wines. That's the cool thing with wine; it's so subjective. What I like may not be what other people like. Right? Don't overcomplicate it. Drink what you want. Buy what you want. Maybe give other things to friends. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's uh, this is a shout out to Rosalie, who is a, she'll never hear this, but she is a uh, wine drinker here in Coeur d'Alene, does not, not like red wine. So whenever she goes to a tasting, those ice cubes are in a red wine. Yeah. And you know what? That's what she likes, and that's okay. There are a couple exceptions to what you just said. I don't think anybody should ever drink yellowtail. And I don't think anybody <laughs> should ever drink uh, white Zinfandel. I think that's kind of about the line yeah. we hold. Those are those are not bad rules. <laughs> no, and you know I made a reference off off air about solo cups. I think that would be one too. One thing that drives me nuts in the restaurant when you get um, this what I call a shot glass wine glass, these little ones, and and you uh, order a Chardonnay and they fill it to the, the brim. It's like. Do you have a bigger glass? Right. Yes, but you won't get any more uh, more wine. I'm like, great. I just want to be able to swirl, please. Jeez. Yes. You know, doing what I do, I, I taste with people. I taste with retailers and restaurants at various times. And you go places, and sometimes you're maybe not supposed to taste at certain places without you know a license, but they want to know what things taste like yeah. so maybe you go to a back room and sure you do a little of this and i've poured into ramekins for people <laughs> to taste and if people don't know what a ramekin is because I, I work in restaurants beforehand it's the the little cup you get your sauce in yeah you know so i, I poured into those i've done tastings where i pour into those because sometimes, sometimes you have that's to. what's available sometimes yeah. you have to yeah so it's it's hard as a buyer though it's hard to, how do you decide if that wine is what you want, that little American? So. Yeah, I, I, you're exactly right about that. It just gives you kind of a, you just touch on it. You're not getting the full thing. This is a 2021 20 Acres Cabernet Sauvignon. And um, I'm going to say real quick some of the wines we had this week, and then we should get into this. Sure. We had uh, a Kiona Lemberger. Mm. It, it was fantastic. Yeah. Oh my God! Very it's very like, good. why is there not more Lemberger out there? Uh, Roblar Chardonnay, a Bindi Sergati La 
Pirlanda Chianti Classico. That's fantastic also. Uh, Revora, Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon. We love our friends at Revora. And believe it or not, Dustin, the Matchbook Malbec. Hey, know I, anything about that? I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. Used to, used to oh talk about all the time. Used to be the hit. This thing has got a nose. Oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah. Our 20 Acres Cabernet. This is, uh, this is a new brand that was created, that we created about mm. two and a half years ago or so. And because uh, this was created before uh, Elemental, it was created before the Jug Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Sauvignon Blanc. Um, because Bogle is such a chain driven brand, we wanted to address and create something more for restaurants. Okay, um, this is perfect for restaurants. And maybe bottle oh shops gosh. that that don't want to carry things that are everywhere. So there's no UPC code on the back here. So you're not going to find this Interesting. in any of the major retailers that I mentioned earlier, you know, right, right. Right, that you can scan a bottle of wine. It, it has to be small places. Uh, you know, I'll throw out a, a place hopefully possibilities, you know, something like that. Rosalie's. Um, Rosalie, I just mentioned she was the number one wine club member. Yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> right on. Well, Jill and Lee are some of my favorite people, yep. and and uh, in fact, I just saw them this last oh, week good. and tasted them on this Twenty Acres Cabernet. But yeah, um, yeah, places like that. Um, and then another shout out would be uh, to the White House Grill. They're they're actually our number one glass pour for this wine in all of Idaho. Maybe even all of the Northwest. So, so they, they do a lot of business for us with this 20 acres cabinet. I mean, it's so interesting. Some stories that intertwine everything. We just had lunch at the White House about two, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, we are here at the business zone again, back to back weeks. Um, thank you to Judy Tebow and Next Level Consulting. Uh, the business zone, who on the third Tuesday of every month does a community spotlight. Uh, last week or this past week just did um, busting the myths of building a business. Um, but one of her main key assistants, Ellie, just got married. Congratulations, Ellie. A toast to you. Congratulations. Okay. Welcome to marriage, married <laughs> life. Hope it treats you well. Um, but uh, yeah, it's and we had lunch down there with all these folks um, to send Ellie off into a, a good luck a wedding. I haven't heard anything otherwise, so I'm thinking, oh, what yeah. Wow. <laughs> no news, hopefully it's good. Yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> this is really good. Uh, Cap Sauve and Petit Sirah, is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Right. Yeah, so uh, what I wanted to take the story for talking about Petit mm -hmm. Sirah. Um, this is this this wine. This brand is kind of a story wine for us, uh, for a couple different reasons. From when we first started back in 1968, so so for wine it's not my family, but the Bogle family sure. are still family owned and operated. Uh, they are sixth generation farmers in the Delta region, uh, third generation grape growers, and so with that, the first 20 acres that. Warren, Warren Senior. Okay. So right now we have Warren Bogle, who is uh, you know president of the company, and he's he's the Shout out to Warren. He's he's in the vineyards, you know, on a daily dirty. basis. Absolutely. Jody Bogle is more of our like consumer relations. She's there at home range a lot. She deals with international sales as well. And then Ryan Bogle, who is our CFO, and he's more of the numbers guy. So he, counting those beans. So right? yeah, so you need a little bit of, of all that. But their parents were the ones that really kind of create, uh, push, took Bogle to the next level. And um, but their their grandparents, Warren Senior, mm. is kind of where this first started. And when he started back in 1968, the first 20 acres that he planted were Petit Syrah and oh. Chenin Blanc. Wow. So now fast forward. I told you we're the number one producer. Of yeah. So we have a 20 acre Cabernet and 20 acre Chardonnay. Chardonnay has a little bit of Chenin Blanc blended in, about mm -hmm. 10, you know, 15 percent under the 20 acres label. Under the 20 acres right. label, okay. and then the Cabernet has about 10, 15 uh, percent Petit Syrah blended in as well. But as we alluded to earlier, you, you don't need to be all Cabernet to be nope. um, called a Cabernet. So with this, we really feel that this is a, a food friendly wine. 
Um, sure. It's under screw cap, so it's easy to sell in restaurants. It's got a little um, chart on the back uh, that, I that tells that. you some tasting notes. So you can pick yeah. it up and go, okay, what's the body? How much fruit is on this? Is it? Yeah, why make my guide to Cabernet Sauvignon? Absolutely. We've got uh, above average uh, fruit, above average uh, oak, uh, a little above average in body, a little below in dryness. And acidity right at the 50-50 mm -hmm. line. Ideal serving temperature, 60 to 65 degrees. By the way, um, any winery listening to this podcast, can you please put as much information on the label as possible? <laughs> I mean, Isn't it helpful? Oh, it's so helpful. And I know it's a little extra step. And even the website, which it's, yes, it's also an extra step, but it's digital. You change it on a dime. Yeah. You're not having to worry about. Oh my God, we printed you know fifty thousand labels yep. that uh, now are uh, not good anymore. On a website, it's changing a web page. Yeah, I mean, super just simple. simple. Do yeah. it. Add what it is. Yeah, please. This is bad. This is really good. And the price point of this on in a restaurant. Uh, restaurants, of course, are trying to get if they're pouring this by the glass, um, it will be what they pay for the bottle. On that first glass, then the other four glasses are a profit. Yeah, and so it's typically, you know, you're gonna find this probably close to twenty-five ish, twenty-five to thirty, maybe. Nice, a bottle in a yeah. restaurant. In a restaurant, got it. Yeah, perfect. So they're they're paying uh, ten, twelve bucks, fifteen yeah. bucks, something like that. Um, and these are general things that we're talking about. Every restaurant is different. By the way, we love like Tito's downtown. Mm -hmm. And man, they they. They get it right. They've got all sorts of um, different wines that you would not find typically, mm -hmm. and they don't price it out of the world. Right. So good for them. Uh, and they'll 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 move some of that product. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's. Uh, in fact, I just talked to uh, a couple of those ladies earlier this week. I had a little trade tasting uh, a few days ago, so I saw a lot of people locally that um, I hadn't seen in a bit. You'll we'll have to give some names for Tito because we're gonna go hard at them for getting our first restaurant the sponsorship. Oh, that'd be awesome! We really want Tito, yeah, because we we I hang it on, you know. The I mean, they've got the freaking resources, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and we we were at it with Sam over at Lola now. It was yeah. Sommelier over at uh, Beverly Sands. So yeah. Um, some things coming up in the future, and we're almost into May. Uh, we have the third international Sauvignon. Blanc Day on the 9th, um, excuse me, on the 3rd. So the 3rd is the International Sauvignon Blanc Day. I'll take that out of there. Up. The 9th is World Moscato Day. Uh, 17th is National Pinot Grigio Day. Are you a big Pinot Gris fan? Um, I like California Pinot Grigio. Not so much. Over uh, Italian Pinot Grigio. And I mean, you can call me bomb if you want, but uh, no, I, I, I love I love to taste fruit and wine. And a lot of times with Italian wines, uh, Pinot Grigio, I get a lot more stone, very much minerality, so. and, and I just like a little bit more fruit. Neither Shelley or I are very big Pinot Gris fans at all. Not to say we haven't had some that we that we think are pretty good, but that is no reason that people shouldn't try Pinot Gris. Mm -mm. By any stretch, the seventeenth is National Pinot Gris Day. Twenty-third, uh, International Chardonnay Day. Um, thank you to Rick Backus. Um, the twenty-fourth anniversary of Judgment of Paris. We probably will not do an episode on that in May because we're going to be really kind of focusing on uh, Oregon wines. And the twenty-fifth is National Wine Day, which, as we've said over and over, is every day in our house. And we have Ron Sharman coming up. In May, uh, we found him, saw him on Shark Tank. Oh, right on. <laughs> what he's doing is fantastic. Um, so that will be a lot of fun. Fly with wine is what he's doing. Uh, next week, we have MJ Teller, the black wine guy. Um, and I think he's rebranded a little bit. Should be interesting. Yeah. I'm forward to talking through that a little bit with him. But we'll be tasting, I believe, a couple of Charles Smith wines. Uh, and then a huge thanks to today's sponsors, 3D Kitchens by Design and Rocky Pond Winery. <sighs> Dustin, 
Thank you so much. We did well. Uh, we didn't use the spit bucket at all, Shelly. Sorry. Didn't use it all. A little bit of knowledge. Wine becomes a lot less overwhelming. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next week with MJ uh, Teller. Let me make sure we get that right. We'll see you next week with MJ Teller, the Black Wine Guy. Have a great weekend, and thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I can't do it. It's Shelly's job. No, oh, that's a great thing. What's the little one do? There. <laughs> <laughs>Thank you for spending part of your day to wind down with Shelly and Phil. Remember, you can listen to any episode of the Wine Time Fridays podcast by visiting winetimefridays.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And join us on our Wine Time Fridays Facebook page, Instagram, or on Twitter, which is at Vintage Tweets, for daily conversation. Until next week, here's our toast to you. To health, wealth, abundance, gratitude, peace on earth, and of course, romance.